Let's go back to the build and check out what I'm doing next. Hopefully I can get out of this thing. Oh, it is cold. Holy smokes, it's cold. Good morning, everybody, from the tiny house in the shop space. And Glacier says, what up? Some updates to the tiny house week. I don't know whatever week I am on. I, I can't keep track of this stuff. I got my coffee. You guys normally would think that I might go with a little bit of dunks building the tiny house in the Boston area. No, I'm not going with dunks, although I do love a good Duncan. A little update for everybody. Check this out. My buddy came by the other day and we put in most of the windows. So let me get a better shot of that. There we go. The windows, some of them are in. Now here's the thing. I'm not here to bash anybody. I'm not here to talk ill on anyone. I just don't, I don't want to be like that. Although I do want to be like that, but I don't want to be like that. 10 windows in the tiny house. Six of them are installed. Four of them are up against my door right here. Might be like, why didn't you put the other four in? Okay, well I can't. These are all damaged. Four out of the 10, that's 40%. I felt that that was a little uncalled for. I don't think that's right. Anderson is replacing them uh, through the supplier that I ordered from, which is National Lumber, which if you're in the Northeast, you might know who National Lumber is. Chances of me ordering Anderson windows again for maybe another tiny house or maybe my shop space or maybe a house in the future, slim to none. I am huge on customer service and granted the customer service was decent, National Lumber customer service could have been a lot better. I don't, I don't know. I can't, I haven't, I haven't really tested the waters in that way. Like everybody I've talked to has said that the way that I was treated was unacceptable. The way that the windows were delivered were extremely unacceptable. And I can throw up some images for everybody so you guys can all see. So you guys can be the judge on whether or not acceptable or not. Enough out of the windows, but I'm happy that they are in. Now that I'm stepping into the tiny house, I gotta turn the lights on. Turn the lights on, there are no lights. There are these. There are these lights here that I'm just using from heart well, that I can turn on in my space here. Yeah, buddy. My dad and I, we put up the drywall, the ceiling. I didn't want to use drywall. I wanted to use a little bit slighter weight material for the ceiling. I was going to use a go board. You can get it in a four by eight sheet which is what this is, four by eight sheets. I use six of them all the way across. Go board weight per square foot is extremely light compared to drywall per square foot. But I ended up going drywall because it's a better finish. There is a lot more work involved by putting go board up on the ceiling. You have to do a full skim over it. It's not as like, smooth as I wanted the ceiling to be. We're looking at a difference of maybe, I think I did the math about 180 pounds. And I was like, you know what? 180 pounds isn't the end of the day. It's not gonna make or break my scale. If I was doing drywall throughout the entire tiny house, then that would be a different story, but I'm not doing that. I'm actually using a company called Wall Theory, which I'm trying to make a deal with but it's a more of a styrofoam board. After we have put the drywall up, we, uh, my dad is very adamant about him taping because he doesn't trust my taping job. So he taped the seams. Drywall is also made for, uh, specifically for taping seams that it makes it a little more, uh, like you can't tell that drywall is up there. I am going to be putting lighting up at the ceiling that is going to wrap the entire space. And it's gonna be like a sconce style, I don't, I don't, not sconce, but like, indirect lighting that's gonna shine up and reflect down uh, into the space. It's gonna be very warm and inviting is my hopeful goal there. And then I built the Murphy bed frame. The Murphy bed frame, I started a couple weeks ago, but I wanted to get the ceiling done because that's a two person job. Uh, and then I bolted the frame into place. And now today I'm going to paint and I am going to uh, put the loft flooring in because I need to put a wall here which is going to have a pocket door and I need to get going on all of that. 
But before I get to painting, I do want to show you this because uh, we just went through a nasty cold spell the last couple days here in the New England area. Uh, we had a record breaking cold temperature recorded at Mount Washington in New Hampshire. That's a about two and a half hours from me. But where I am at, we dip down into like negative 20, negative 15, somewhere in there. However, <laughs> this was a really good opportunity for me, it's for me to test out this new sleeping bag that this company just sent me. I don't know how to say their, their name. I think it's like Bigelow or something like that, but uh, I'm going to show you me testing that out in like 10 degrees. Let's go check that out right now. All right, so this company actually sent me this sleeping bag. Not getting paid for this, but they probably sent out a bunch of sleeping bags to a bunch of different people. They sent out emails and, you know, whoever accepted, accepted. I get dozens of these emails, you know, weekly and, and monthly. You know, I saw this one and it piqued my interest. They're a company, I don't know if they're new. Uh, I'm gonna butcher their name, so I'll put the, the name of them down here, but they have a Kickstarter campaign that actually is for this sleeping bag. Now, they are claiming that this is the warmest sleeping bag out there. It's got NASA technology into it. I don't know the material. I don't know sleeping bags. I just know I want to be warm. And I'm going to get into this and show you guys in a second because I'm going to show you this right now. 10 degrees, you are expected to get down to a negative eight and it's going to be negative 11 tomorrow. And that's just where I am. I am going to stay bundled up. I got a hoodie on, I've got my beanie on and I've got just regular pants on. All right, guys, I am mic'd up right now, so hopefully this is gonna be picking me up. I am freaking freezing already, so I'm gonna get into this thing. We're gonna try it out and see. Yeah, I got my sneakers on inside, oh well. I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Now this company claims that it can handle negative 40 degrees. Other people that posted videos on this, now if, this, if I was lying down, this would be easier. They wish that the zipper was a little bit easier to zip up which I can attest to, I wish the same. Now, why is it important for me to do a video or to, to showcase this? If you follow my channel long enough, then you would know that I just bought property in Maine. It gets freaking cold up there. The camera is actually sitting on the back of my truck. I actually can already see that I'm warm, or I'm being, I'm more warm, I should say. And with that property, I might do some camping, you know, and I want to, I like winter camping. I actually do. Some people do, some people don't. I don't know. I like it. Yeah, this zipper is no bueno. The company needs to fix the zipper issue. I tried zipping it up from the inside. It wasn't working. Well, I'm also pretty tight in here. I'm also trying to do this while standing up, which is not easy, an easy feat. Oh, maybe this is not meant for people of my size. I'm about, I'm about, about a buck 90 right now. <laughs> Oh, there we go. All right, I can say I'm actually rather toasty. I am warm. The, the only thing that's really cold on me right now is my, my face. This is freaking comfy. I could stand out here comfortably. I definitely want to do some truck camping, and I want to make sure that, that I am warm. Um, this, company actually, this company also sent me a blanket that I need to test out. So uh, now Glacier and I can both do some truck camping and make sure that we are relatively safe and warm. I'm going to be doing a build out on the truck that the camera's sitting on right now. I'm going to put a cap on my F-250. I'm going to do a really simple kind of stealthy build that I can do camping, uh, either urban camping, stealth mode, or I can do, you know, camping out in the wilderness. So having like a sleeping bag like this to be on top of my mattress will just be kind of like a win, I feel like, um, to keep me warm. And, and, and Glacier's, uh, Glacier, my dog, is part pit and she loves being under the blanket. So I don't know why I had a pit before Glacier and that's a pit thing. Pits love being under blankets. I will say this is handling the 11 degree, 10 degree weather like nothing, like this is easy. I could, I could definitely sleep in this in 10 degrees, 100%. By the way, I did have a rooftop tent and the first day I slept in it, it was 15 degrees out. And luckily I had a, uh, I had a portable diesel heater, but be honest with you, I wouldn't have probably needed if I had something like this. Let's go back to the build and check out what I'm doing next. Hopefully I can get out of this thing. Oh, it is cold. Holy smokes, it's cold. While I am packing up the sleeping bag now, I will say it's great material. It kept me warm. A little bit of drawbacks that I don't like, but I can, I personally can get over that zipper situation. 
as well as the packability of it. I don't know if that's a word, packability. Because of its dense material that is being used in it and the NASA technology, I love how the people say it, NASA technology. Because of that, I really feel like to comp to make it compact in like a in like a travel bag, like if you're a through hiker, a lot of through hikers sleep in extremely cold weather. I'm not a through hiker, but I know some and they want stuff that's compact and lightweight. This is a little bit heavier than your standard sleeping bag. I wanna say it's like four pounds, but I have to look that up. Again, this isn't a review. Uh, I'm not getting paid for this. I just wanted to show this off because I actually did like the, the idea of the company. And when they sent it to me, I actually do like the sleeping bag itself. I am gonna use it. I'm gonna be truck camping. Back to the house, here we go. All right, this is a pretty good spot to actually stop this vlog. I didn't time lapse it, but I just put a fresh coat of paint on the Murphy bed. And this will be the color of all the cabinetry, um, probably the underneath portion of my couch. Uh, the cushions will probably be like a, like a light brown, like a rusticky brown, like, like, like a loft. But for the people that can't see my vision, this is kind of what I was envisioning. This is the concrete panel I'll be going with throughout the entire, like long, the elongated walls right here and on that wall over there. And then this brick will be acting as an accent. It'll be here on the inside of the Murphy. It'll be up there, over here, and it'll also be in the upper section of that loft up there. That's kind of where my vision was and what I was trying to get. And, for everybody that was like, I can't see it, I can't see it. Well, this is it now. These panels are actually not, these are these are just samples. So they're actually a lot smaller than the real panels. The real panels are four feet in length and two feet in height. So they're big, you know, panels that, that'll look like concrete blocks. Same thing with the, well, that's coming off. I just, I just stuck a tape on there, you know, no big deal. All right, guys, if you didn't know this already, I do a vlog every, or I try to do one every week, whether it's a building vlog or an adventure where I'm traveling, which I'll be going to next week. Me just talking smack on some other, you know, overpriced vans or something like that. So, and then my tours on Thursdays, please go and check out all the other playlists that I have on my channel if you're interested in knowing more, watching more, and stay tuned on the closing of the land, which is happening really, really soon, which I will bring you to the land so you can see it for yourself. And I don't know, maybe I'll say where it is. We'll see what happens. See you guys later.